Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Reiboot. If you've ever come across any issues with your iOS device, rather you're constantly stuck on an Apple logo, a reboot loop, a black screen, just stuck, Reiboot offers a standard repair which fix up to 150 iOS issues with no data loss. If you have more serious problems, you have the deep repair which allows you to restore your device back to factory working order and you can enter and exit recovery mode with one single click. So check out Reiboot, links will be in the description down below. Hey guys, Anybody's help here. Welcome back to the channel. And iOS 15.1 Developer Beta 2 has been out for nearly a week. So in this video, I wanted to share with you guys my experience so far with iOS 15.1 Developer Beta 2. Now in this video, I also want to talk about expected release dates and new features for the next beta, Beta 3. So of course, if you want to stay up to date with the latest iOS news, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss another episode. Now the first thing I want to do is give Give you guys a quick recap of some of the latest new features that Apple has re-enabled and added within iOS 15.1 and I want to start off with SharePlay. Now SharePlay is one of the biggest features coming to FaceTime within iOS 15. It was delayed on iOS 15, the official release, but iOS 15.1, Apple has re-enabled this feature. It is working perfectly fine so hopefully SharePlay will stick around and it will make the official final release for iOS 15.1. So fingers crossed it is working perfectly fine. Now Apple has also added a brand new feature to iOS 15.1 and that is immunization records for COVID-19. You can now add those to the wallet. So that's something new, something interesting that Apple has added. Now there's also some changes to the control center. If you use spatial audio, as you can see right there, there's a new description and a new animation for spatial audio within control center for iOS 15.1 as well so there's also minor changes within the software if we go to the phone extension right here the announce calls the icon is slightly different on this beta ios 15.1 beta 2 same thing applies for facetime announce calls icon as well there is a new watch face the world time watch face is now available so yeah minor changes within ios 15.1 and apple enabling SharePlay, which is one of the big features coming to the platform hopefully it sticks around now i also want to talk about some of the bug fixes late last week on friday Friday, Apple released iOS 15.0.1 to address an Apple Watch communication issues for iPhone 13 users with Apple Watch. If you went to unlock your iPhone using the mask detection, the iPhone would just simply not communicate with Apple Watch and you couldn't unlock your device using that feature. That feature has been uh, addressed with iOS 15.0.1, which is now available to the public. But Apple has also addressed that particular concern within Beta 2 for 15.1. So again, 15.1 Beta 2, not to be confused fused with 15.0.1 which is now available out to the general public which also addresses an issue within the settings application some users reported that when launching the settings app your iPhone will prompt you that the storage is full although you still had storage left over again 15.0.1 has addressed this issue and 15.1 beta 2 as well and it looks like many users are reporting that the issues have been address now i also want to talk about my personal experience with the software so far i want to say that the battery on ios 15.1 has been the best that it's been in a very very long time i'm not sure if it has anything to do with the iphone 13 pro max but it's been very great on iphone 12 pro max iphone 13 pro max also been testing iphone 8 models iphone 7 so battery is looking very good so hopefully once this software officially launches to the general public, everyone will enjoy better battery performance overall. Now, overall, my experience has been good, but I also want to talk about expected features for the future, hopefully coming to iOS 15.1. And the one thing I want to talk about is the driver's license and IDs feature. Now, this feature Apple has already enabled for certain states here in the United States, but hopefully we'll see Apple expand upon this feature here. Again, driver's license and IDs has already been uh, enabled for certain states and Apple will continue to expand, hopefully with 15.1. Now, one thing that I'm really looking forward to is the app privacy feature. Now, Apple has promised this really nice graphical user interface that allows you to read and understand better which apps are using your data, accessing the microphone, the camera, and things like that. If we head on over to settings here and we go to privacy, if we scroll all the way to the bottom here in privacy, we got the record app activity, which is essentially the app privacy report, but it is incomplete as of right now. You can save data for seven days 
interface as you can see right there but this is the graphical user interface that apple has promised i'm looking forward to this because this will give users clarity of which applications are using the microphone the camera the data the location what time of the day how many times of the day so i'm really looking forward to this one as well now new emojis are set to be launching with ios 15.1 hopefully those will be integrated within the software after this official release to the public which we'll talk about here in just a few seconds now apple has also been testing airpods beta software and i'm looking forward to proximity view for airpods or find my airpods that is a feature that apple has promised to be coming to the airpods has yet to be enabled and hopefully with ios 15.1 in future airpod beta software we should see the find my airpods enabled feature here with ios 15.1 and last but not least i want to talk about prores video recording coming to the iphone 13 pro and 13 pro max apple has promised that with future software updates the iphone 13 pro and 13 pro max should be capable of recording prores video and hopefully that will be enabled here within beta 3 or maybe beta 4 in the near future now in regards to performance i did wanted to share some performance for you guys you guys have asked me this is beta uh, 1 all uh, right there it is 1721 on a single core score beta 2 is 1746 so minor increase in performance single core score but the biggest leap is in the multi-core score department beta 1 4683 beta 2 4786 so we've seen an increase in performance from beta 1 to beta 2 which is obviously a great thing to see now in terms of release dates for ios 15.1 developer beta 3 apple seems to be on a weekly release schedule now we've seen a new beta every week after beta 1 so the next beta should be tomorrow october the 5th now apple could release as early as later today after watching this video but ios 15.1 beta 3 should start dropping tomorrow for registered developers and a little later after that maybe on the for public beta testers as well now in regards to the official release i'm thinking this software will see maybe uh four or five betas with an rc and then an official release in case you didn't know apple has made it official apple has announced that the apple watch series 7 will go on pre-orders on october 8th and officially available for the public on october 15th in stores so pre-orders for apple watch series 7 again October 8th and official launch October the 15th so I'm thinking iOS 15.1 should be dropping within the next two weeks or so and that is everything I wanted to share with you guys in terms of performance battery everything is looking good some of the features that we can expect expected release dates for beta 3 and so on let me know what you think about iOS 15.1 if you're using the software on your device or are you looking forward to this software once it is officially released thank you for watching this follow-up video guys and I'll see you on the next one Peace.